So the talk today was a very specific problem around innovation, which is how established firms innovate during periods of transformative changes in their industry. This is a hard problem for many companies. Although as academics, we study companies and look at what, what they're doing with their innovation activities, but it's actually a very difficult problem back, going back in the days of Xerox. You know, we know Xerox had some of the best ideas, uh, whether it's about email, whether it's about programming, whether it's about the mouse that we use today, uh, but it wasn't able to take those innovations into the market. And, uh, and the way I sort of think about this problem is a problem of really converting inventions to innovations. So you have ideas, you have some scientific discoveries, but it's really the innovation that translates those inventions into products and services as how you create value. So what we did uh, with a doctoral student of mine, we did a research project looking at this problem in the case of the pharmaceutical sector. And we and we looked at over a 20 year period from 19, early 1990s to, to 2010, um, what were some of the transformative changes taking place in the pharmaceutical sector? Uh, what we did was we focused on two specific changes. Uh, one is, goes by the name of monoclonal antibodies, which is a biology-based therapeutic solution. The second is gene therapy. We looked at over 20 year periods, the top pharmaceutical firms, top 50 of them, how they invested in these technologies. And what we found was half surprising and half not. We saw the same problems that we know from Xerox and Kodak, that it's not that these companies don't see the new technology or they don't see the, the change, but really how they manage the change internally that tends to be the source of the problem. And we saw some of that in the pharmaceutical sector as well. So we saw that um, companies are investing in these disruptive technologies, but somehow those technology inventions are not moving towards products. You know, what we do in the business school is to offer solutions to these problems. And uh, so what we found was when firms are pursuing these disruptive innovations, in-house research, doing it internally, or even outsourcing the research. So letting an external lab doing the research or just licensing an IP, that's typically not enough because once you get the IP into the company or once you have a discovery from the lab, the decision making around disruptive innovation tends to make it very rigid and it makes it less flexible for firms to push that to the products because the business model is not well defined. Uh, there's a lot of uncertainty in terms of how much market share we can capture. So these discoveries tend to be put on hold, just like we saw in the case of Xerox. But then we found that when firms partner with other firms, and in this case, the big pharma firms are partnering with startups in the biotech space, we found because now the decision is made by this alliance, as opposed to the firm, we see those inertial tendencies are much weaker, and they actually move towards commercialization. You know, the important source of difference that we saw was this difference between the closed versus the open model. So firms that were using a much more closed approach to innovation, most of it is around in-house research, or we can license an IP, but we really want to control what we do with the IP, they tend to get more stuck with these disruptive innovations in terms of taking it through the market. But the firms that tend to offer an open approach, which is to let's work with partners, let's build a broader ecosystem of innovation activities, those are the firms where we feel or we see that uh, they're more likely to resolve these inertial forces and push these disruptive innovations into the marketplace.